Hi guys, I'm back and I've been asked by quite a few people to do a video on the coronavirus. I'm going to give you my opinion on it. Uh, let me just get something in red right here. Okay, so what is the coronavirus? When we're talking about the virus that's on the news, we're talking about a mutated virus, 2019, the N, which means novel or new coronavirus for V, okay? This is the city where it originated from, potentially from, from some seafood. They, they really don't know a tremendous amount about this virus yet. But what you need to know is that coronaviruses in general uh, are very common. So there's many different types of coronavirus. This specific one is a mutated virus. And a mutation is something that gets altered this life, not passed on through generations and generations. The common thread with all these coronaviruses is that they attack the lungs, okay? And I'm gonna cover several aspects of this virus. First thing you need to know is a virus is not necessarily a living thing. It cannot reproduce without hijacking your own cells. So it leaches or hijacks your DNA machinery from your cell and then it turns on a little copy machine and it starts reproducing like crazy. So that's what it does. So a virus is like a parasite. And what I mean by a parasite is it takes something from you, but it doesn't give anything back. So it's kind of like a criminal. Now with the good bacteria that lives in your digestive system, you give them a home, you give them food, but they give you vitamins. They give you certain compounds that are beneficial for your immune system. So they're, they're exchanging good things with you. But these viruses, just don't do that. Now, the other point I want to bring up is the topic on glucose, sugar. The flu virus infection depends on cellular glucose. Uh, there's a really interesting uh, research study. I'm going to put it down below. They found that when you increase glucose, you increase the flu infection rate. Now, I'm not saying that the coronavirus lives on glucose, but it might. There's just a lot of unknowns but there's quite a few viruses that thrive in a glucose-filled environment. So what would be the opposite fuel of glucose? Fat fuel or ketones, right? So ketones are really beneficial to support a healthy immune system. Now, when you combine fasting, you can actually put your body in autophagy. And one of the purposes of autophagy, which goes beyond just uh, recycling damaged protein, is cleaning up microbes, bacteria, viruses, parasites from your body. So a fasting is very, very beneficial. Also, when you do prolonged fasting, you can increase stem cells for the immune system and basically grow a new immune system, as well as strengthen your immune system too. And unfortunately right now, uh, the news is blowing this up all over the place, okay? It's not just on TV, it's on the internet, it's all over the place. So they're putting out this serious epidemic threat to society or it might even turn into a pandemic event. An example of an epidemic would be some uh, sudden spike in a virus throughout the country. Pandemic is more a worldwide spread event. Now, I did two different videos, okay, that I'm gonna put a link down below. One on the bubonic plague, which is in 1840, if I'm not mistaken. And the other one is the Spanish flu, which was also a pandemic event in 1918. And I want to summarize those two events and tell you what really happened. Because the way that they're projecting this thing is that this virus just floats around and infects everyone and kills everyone. But that's not the whole story. Let's first talk about the bubonic plague or the black plague. Um, what occurred just before that event, and by the way, this is based on some autopsies, um, which they found this grave site and they dug up these bodies. They found a higher incidence of rickets, uh, injuries to these bodies, and other types of things that show nutritional deficiencies, okay? So there was a war involved, which I'll come back to in a second. But there was also, um, right before that, a massive volcano, which covered the sky with this cloud of smoke that obstructed the sun. So you had a change in vitamin D levels, number one, Number two, there was a huge problem in growing plant food. So right there, you can create um, two things. One is nutritional deficiencies from the food that you eat. And number two, just not enough sun. And that can actually really affect your immune system. Vitamin D has a major influence over your immune system. 
there are vitamin D receptors in the nucleus of your cells. There are vitamin D receptors in your white blood cell. It modulates your immune system, which means it can control it to a large degree. And many different types of viruses and microorganisms, Epstein-Barr virus, hepatitis B virus, uh, cytomegalovirus, uh, even TB, which is a bacteria, have an interesting strategy of blocking your vitamin D receptor and not allowing vitamin D to work that well in your body, which allows them to thrive. So with viruses, there's always this predisposing susceptibility factor for the virus to set in and take over. And this explains too why some people get sick and some people don't. It really has to do with their vitamin D levels, their stress level, and their, the strength of their immune system. Now, the Spanish flu in 1918 was also very, very interesting because it was a global thing. So if you look at what happened just before that, it was World War I. What happened with World War I? You had this huge shift in transportation of food and also preserving food with things like canned food and creating food that's more refined without nutrients. And this was a worldwide thing. So you had this huge global shift of food from fresh food to preserved foods. Now, what's the difference? Well, a major drop in nutrients, okay? Also, the peak at when most people died during the Spanish flu was smack dab right in the middle of winter, January. Interesting. And there were some other factors as well. Uh, one was that they didn't know the toxic effect of aspirin. And so they were giving people massive amounts of aspirin. And what happens is that can create a toxic effect with your lungs and actually create bleeding uh, of the lung. And you can actually die simply because you're drowning in your own blood. But again, I want to really bring up this point, this important point in this susceptibility to pulling in this virus and actually having it manifest. And this just explains why some people contract it and get sick. Some people don't. The other fascinating point is with influenza. There are over 300,000 to 600,000 people who die globally from the flu. Okay. Now in America, 30,000 to 60,000 people die. Now, if we compare America based on the population with other countries that have died of the flu, you're going to find some really interesting information. In America, we have double the rate of deaths from influenza than any other country. Yet we spend the most money on medical care, vaccinations, and we're supposed to have the best health care. Well, according to that, we have a bit of conflicting data. And I really think it has to do with a combination of all the junk food and the amount of sugar and the amount of refined food that Americans eat, which just sets people up for having a weak immune system. Okay, on this chart, I'm showing you different things that cause you to die on a monthly basis, okay? So with the coronavirus, 25 people have died per month, roughly, okay? Now check this out, aspirin, 250 people a month die from aspirin. That's 10 times the amount of coronavirus. Look at iatrogenic deaths, 20,000. This means deaths from medical treatment, whether it's mistakes from surgery, medication, or getting some infection in the hospital that you die. 20,000 people a month die from this. And this is just in the United States. And these other ones are global, okay? Check this out. The flu, influenza, 38,000 people a month die from influenza. Look, compare this to the coronavirus. It doesn't even compare. But the news is blowing this so far out of proportion. Why don't they talk about this or this or even that? Look at this, HIV virus, 49,000 people a month die from HIV. That's a little more than this, isn't it? Car accidents, 90,000 people die from car accidents. These stats dominate this number right here. Now check this out. 1 million people die from heart disease every single month. Wow, it just seems like there's a, a little bit of a distortion of what they should be emphasizing. And also all the stress that's created from the news and the panic is going to cause people 
to get in car accidents and increase this rate, not to mention more stress for the heart. The only point I'm trying to make is you have to put things in the right proportion. Okay, so what can you do? Number one, keep your immune system really, really strong. Take more vitamin D. Also, zinc is very, very important for the immune system. If you're in an area that's vulnerable to viruses, wear a mask, wash your hands, limit the exposure. Next thing I would do is I would get on a healthy keto plan, nutrient-dense foods. I would do fasting. That would be very, very important. And the last thing, limit the amount of news that you watch that keeps your adrenals so rubbed up and stressed so that way you can keep your stress at a good level. Thanks for watching.